welcome to CivilNet. Our guest today is Mr. Yervan Zorian. He is the chief architect of Synopsis Corporation, a board member of Ar American University of Armenia, board member of Armenian General Benevolent Union, and the founder, of, uh, founder and president of Armenian Virtual University, which is a project sponsored by Armenian General Be Benevolent Union itself. Uh, welcome, Mr. Uh, Zorian. Welcome to CivilNet. It's a big pleasure to have you here as our guest. Thanks, Harut. I appreciate that. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Zorian, uh, AVC Armenian Virtual College started uh, in 2009, but uh, its preparations started long before. Uh, you started with almost 100 uh, students, and uh, I guess you have thousands of students now, or alumni. Uh, how, how is the dynamic changing? How, 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 is the, how is it developing now? How do you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, when we started the virtual college, we did not know how many uh, students will obtain. We know that the interest was there to obtain Armenian education, but uh, how can we advance our numbers, reach a large number of people, reach remote places in the world was unknown to us initially. Um, yes, we started with about 100 students, slightly more than 100 students for the first quarter, but the numbers grew, and today as we complete our third year of service, uh, we have crossed the 2,000 number, so we, do ha we have served more than 2,000 students during this short period of time. 2,000 is a, is a really, for a, for a really short period of time, for three years, is a very significant number. Uh, how, how many courses do you have? How many languages do you teach? Okay, so <clears throat> in terms of courses, we divide our courses to three departments. So we're serving Armenian education in three different uh, subject matters. One is Armenian language, which has the highest demand. Uh, most of the Armenians and non-Armenians who relate to Armenia or Armenians somehow would like to learn the Armenian language. Okay? So we teach Armenian language, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian in two separate tracks. So that's one department. And it starts from ground zero by assuming that no one knows the language at that point. And then it goes up to the proficiency level where one can speak fluently, understand, read, write, and so on. So it's a nice um, set of courses, back to back. And if one already knows some of the language, it starts from the middle point. That's, uh, now, the second department is history. As you know, Armenian history is very important. Um, so we divided the history to eight uh, periods of time, starting from the ancient history, going up to the modern ages, up to today. So all these eight courses, again, teach history. The third and the last department that we have is the culture department. There we teach Armenian architecture, music, fine arts, and so on. And all these started with uh, four or five languages, and it reached now seven languages, I guess. The teaching languages, I the, mean. That is correct. We started with limited number of courses. We started at the first level, so the first slice of courses, the first one or two courses of each department. So we expanded them to complete the departments. At the same time, we expanded the, 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 core, the languages. Now, as you know, diaspora, unfortunately, does not speak Armenian all over. So diaspora is divided to different places. Uh, we do have multiple languages there. So that's why we chose multiple teaching languages. So uh, English is one of them, French is another, Russian, Spanish. And for, me, for the Armenian speakers, we do have Eastern and Western Armenian. Now, recently, go ahead. Recently, you added Turkish. Recently, we added Turkish as well for many Armenians or non-Armenians. Who, who can speak Turkish and don't know the other languages. Which is, I, I think, which is very important in terms of uh, preserving Armenian heritage uh, inside the Armenian uh, minority, uh, inside Turkey. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only the Armenian minority, uh, but, but also the Armenians who want to uh, come back or, or want, exactly. want to... They have Armenian roots yes. and they'd like to, to, to be attached again to their Arminianism, and many of them cannot go to Armenian schools or, or to Armenian churches and so on. This is the, the possibility for them. Which is a great possibility. Um, uh, what, are the new, what are the new projects of the Armenian Virtual uh, College uh, this year and the, the coming, in the coming ac academic year? Um, as you know, besides expanding in, in quantity, in numbers, besides expanding in the languages, we are looking into expanding in, in the age groups. OK, 
Okay? So we started uh, providing our courses to the adults initially, and then from the adults we found out something that we did not initially intend to, and that is reaching the kids. Now, many Armenian schools, our formal schools that we know around the world, approached us to obtain this new way of teaching, that is online teaching, multimedia, electronically, uh, through to various interesting games and mechanisms. So they, they wanted to adopt this modern way of teaching in the existing Armenian schools. So we call this the high hybrid system. Hmm? Hybrid in the sense that it is on one side online, and the other it's face to face as well, because it requires a teacher in the classroom also. So this hybrid system became quite attractive. We started with the first school in, in Dubai, in Sharjah, our Armenian school there, and it expanded. It expanded to, to East Europe, to, 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 to the US, to Canada, uh, to, to, uh, to West Europe as well, and so on. Today we have more than 10 hybrid schools that are partnered with us, and they use ABC courses to teach the kids. Well, uh, what are the uh, age ranges uh, of your students? Um, the age group is, is quite uh, distributed. Mm -hmm. It's distributed in the sense that uh, we have individual students who start from age 16, 17, and we have a wide range that goes up to the mid-80s, 84, 85-year-old students as well. These are the individual students. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the largest percentage come from the, the, the groups between twen in 20s, 20 to 30, then the next group is 30 to 40, and so on, and it goes up as, as people mature. We, we see lesser percentages. Well, uh, 20s, uh, mean, it means that uh, they are mostly college students, university yes. students. Uh, what about your uh, certificates, your uh, credits? Do these students uh, uh, have the chance to get accreditation for these credits inside their universities? They do actually, yes. And that's one of the good things that we have. And the students actually are, can choose their courses to be with credit or without credit. Okay, uh, so depending on what age they are or where they are in their studies, they may choose to do with credits. It means that they have to do projects, they have to do exams, uh, group projects with their virtual classmates, the other virtual students, um, or they, would, they can do it as observers, hmm, as auditors. And as auditors, what you do is you would take all the courses together with the others, but you don't do the exams, you don't do the, the, the projects. Hmm. Now, for the students who are in the university age, they like to do it with credits. And the credits are such that one can transfer them from the Armenian Virtual College, from ABC, to the university or the academic institutes where you happen to be a student. So what you do is you can choose it as an elective course, a language course, Armenian language, or history or culture course, and you can transfer the credits from the Armenian Virtual College to your corresponding university. Well. Um I think it's your third birthday uh, this week yes. and uh, being the first and the only virtual college and the only place where Armenians can have a virtual education all around the world, uh, as your motto says, Armenian education anytime, anywhere. Um, what, what are your uh, next steps? What, what, what are your next uh, objective, maybe? Our next objective is to reach communities where we we didn't have uh, too much presence at. Uh, in the US, in France, in Argentina, in the Middle East, we had good uh, representation. The project or the university itself being fully sponsored by AGBU, by the Armenian General Benevolent Union, our AGBU branches, our AGBU media and, and, uh, and members helped us a lot to penetrate in the classical diasporan communities. Today we are expanding further, so we'd like to go to more towards uh, Eastern Europe, uh, towards the classical, um, the, the Soviet uh, previous republics, uh, Russia, Ukraine, CIS, CIS uh, Kazakhstan, and so on. And we have developed very good relations with the new communities in these areas. We were very successful in Tbilisi. One of our board members helped us a lot to, 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 be, to have a good establishment in Tbilisi to reach large numbers. Another success story we have in Rostov, and an old Armenian strong community, they established their own AVC lab in Rostov and we, 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 we teach there very uh, prominently. So we're expanding it further to Moscow, to St. Petersburg, to Kharkov and elsewhere. So these are new territories for us and expanding in these areas will be quite helpful for our goals. 
Well, uh, Mr. Zorian, we wish the best for Armenian Virtual College and uh, for you also. And thank you for having this interesting interview with us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, our audiences. Thanks, Eric.